last week on Honor Bound. We rejoin the party as they loot the slain dragon's hoard, while Martor is examining the gate. Bowen sends Thimble on a quest. The adventurer once left a very heavy backpack full of rations, equipment, and trinkets and rations. Ooh, where? You guys are kind of boring anyway. I take it this is your backpack that you left behind and you're just too lazy to get? Uh, <laughs> I am a brave adventurer. Whilst trying to find a new hiding place for the backpack, Thimble runs into the Minotaur, but manages to convince it to leave. Hey, buddy, I, I don't know what to tell you, but all your friends are dead and your castle's been kind of ransacked. <laughs> And uh, the guys who did it are up on the tower after I killed the big black dragon. But we so have a permit. You should probably just go away right now. I don't want to have to hurt Thimble you. Thimble returns to the party and blames the Minotaur for the loss of Bowen's backpack. With nothing more to do but wait, while Martul ponders how to open the gate, the party takes a rest. Finally, after eight hours, he finds the answer. Okay, I hit the door with the hammer. You hit the gate with the hammer. It goes up with a bright light, as bright as the sun. You, you guys cover your eyes. It's way too bright to look at it. After that, the rune is cracked in two. After the visions fade, the party enters the mysterious cavern and soon encounter a fey creature that Thimble instantly befriends. Bright green light, but a small circle moving towards you, and it suddenly stops. How far in front? He, he, just a couple of feet in front of you. It's like a small, very, very tiny human with small wings and <laughs> very dressed very lavishly. A fairy! I say, I and I, I skirt towards it quickly. Okay, I'm gonna give you a new name. And I'm going to base it in my own name because I think of you like my own daughter. Your name is Thimbalina. Their new friend leads them to the Alvin sage they had been seeking. He reveals everything to them and gives them guidance. Here, Alan Thiel. Well, okay, so we have two options. We can go defeat the nine corrupted old gods. Sounds a little uh, scary. And they're going to be loose soon. Or we can go collect the blood from all three of the Guardians, one of whom has been trying to hunt us down and kill us, and all of whom are roughly as powerful as this guy, or Haggard, if you remember him. Um, so two of them would probably give us their blood voluntarily, and he knows where they all are, which is why we were looking for him in the first place. I forgot that part. Uh, but I do not know what is to come. I would suggest dealing with the <clears throat> problems in this part of the world. Uniting the dwarves the doors of the hammer watch with the other races. Oh, that'll be easy. I got this great uh, fist speech with some fingers. It'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> the sage bid the party to wait in the cave until after his death for their own safety. After witnessing the execution of the sage, they use the enchanted horn to return, but an unexpected sight greets them. There's something wrong. So, lights, fighters, part of the fortress is ablaze. Looking to the right. You see the flying fortress down, crashed. Half of the castle in ruins. You can see people fighting now. Uh, isn't it the castle um, that he just told us to come to and recruit these people? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, if we save their lives, I think we'll have a pretty good... Pretty good argument for why they should join us. Alright, let's do it! Charge! Um, they rush in to join the battle, but on closer inspection... It seems the king's forces are fighting themselves. Okay. Is it just a complete melee? Like, can I tell? It's a complete melee. There's no, like, it was two cl two sides that went clashing. It's just, like, everyone's killing everybody. Everybody's killing everybody. And there's no, like, there's... Okay. But once the battle is joined, Bowen finds a way to identify the traitors. I said the traitors have marked themselves with the silver arm. Well, that'll make it easy to identify them. The battle reaches its climax as Bowen faces the enemy champion. Untrimmed beard. He has like a studded with armor. 
a very hairy body, like his arms are full of hair. Oh my god, it's and Daniel. He has a shield <laughs> in hand and a big spear in the other hand. And he looks, I, looks at I you say, with eyes as black as coals. Pick on some beardy your own size. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my beard thickens. After mopping up the last foes, the king explains they have been gone a long time and tells them of all that occurred in their absence. We have reports. The wandering woods. The war between the elves and the orcs. is finally happening. Oh uh, yeah, we're gonna need to stop that. We had more reports. Down below, down south, in Varys. This Lord uh, Francesco has installed some kind of fanatic cult of a serpent and has a dictatorship over <coughs> all of the cities of Varus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have received a letter from um, an organization named the Bonjuatis, sons and um, nobles trying to stop him, asking for help. Well, we'll have to give it. They decide to head to Vallis first. The politics there are a mess. They they need a major makeover, and I think they're about to get it. Right. What lies in wait for them in Vallis? Find out next week on On About. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Honor Bound, Redemption of the New Guard. How are you all doing today? Or are you all still watching the video? I'm still watching the video. We're okay. 10 seconds behind you. Well, I'm just going to ramble for a few moments then, because I didn't actually get to see the video, and it's important that you guys watch it so that I know what's happening, because you're going to need to tell me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hopefully you guys are done. Yeah, I don't know everyone else's Twitch delay is. <coughs> done. done. I, I, I saw it. Welcome, Repeat everybody. What about? <laughs> So, what did we do last week? <laughs> uh, I think we unleashed the apocalypse. Oh, that's basically, right. I remember. I remember. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We, so basically, we if, we just if, this was a, if this was a TV show, that was the season finale. No, sorry, this is season two. What? That's, that's confusing. That's kind of no, that makes Not, sense. We came to a very clean sense. cut. There's a very yeah. stark change in the campaign. Chucky's totally right on this yeah. one. You unleashed the old gods in the world, the corrupted old gods in the world. And Hold seemingly... Hold on a sec. <laughs> right. I'm not going to accept... I refuse to accept the blame for this. So put it like this, put it like this. You've been trying to foil Iscariot's plan, but his power, he imprisoned Farumbra. And the sage told you, if he really wanted the hammer, he would have come for it himself. He found it before he could find you again. It wasn't his choice to not to <clears throat> not kill you. It was, it was his plan to push you to go to Elenthio because he was the only one who knew that Elenthio was guarding a prison and not something that could actually help you. And you were the only ones who could wield the hammer. Elenthio said, not one of the guardians can touch the hammer and you saw this before the first time you met uh, haggard when haggard tried to reach for the hammer and touched it he was badly singed it's pretty good planning chuck you've thought this out well too, in advance too bad you don't have a character in this campaign that can that can explain this to bowen <laughs> well it but was but i get bowen to was... interpret the world through my own my own lens for I mean, the I, record I, I, theron I didn't want to go do this at all theron said we should just leave it there yeah i think you guys should just listen to the angry elf and we would have been a much better situation yeah maybe. Mar martyr's overriding problem is curiosity mm. so guys um with the change in the world Something has changed inside of you. This is the best opportunity for me to include some variants uh, in the uh, campaign. And oh, what right. I'm talking about, yes, I'm going to explain it now, and we're going to talk about it a bit. I'm okay. not actually completely sure about it. I think it's a good idea just because it fits the scene. So the new variant 
would be a honor skill. So I'm going to show you what oh, ability score, what the honor ability score is. Um, honor checks include being unsure how to act with honor, surrendering by trying to uh, save face, trying to determine other characters' honor score, trying to use the proper ethic in a delicate social situation, or using his or her honorable or dishonorable reputation to influence somebody, somebody else. And the honor saving throws would be avoiding an accidental breach in honor or teak, resisting the urge to respond to goading or insults from an enemy, recognizing when an enemy attempts to trick a character into a breach of honor. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. It, it fits the scene. What do you guys think? What's, what's your opinion? I, I know Neil's opinion. I'm just hearing this for the first time. I'm not thrilled by the concept, but you're you're the DM here. You gotta you tell us the rules we're playing by. I unfortunately haven't read the DMG yet. You're the dad of the campaign. You have to make the decisions for the children. Okay, we're not 18 yet. I will say it's going to be tough to implement because I'm already we're already six level characters. Yes, and it doesn't sound like there's that's enough of a carrot or a stick to influence me in any way. Like, I think I, unless you've made a very strange, unrealistic world, we're powerful enough now that, you, you know, there's not going to be much to push us around, I guess I would say. <laughs> Except for the suffering. And <laughs> on, <laughs> I, I think, yeah, compared to the, yeah, I don't know. We can see. We can try it. But I don't, I don't see it as having much, as much of an effect as, like, third level spells do. In the oh, game. no, I agree. I completely agree. It's not going to have a big... Like, I'm sitting a, down and like, negotiating. Uh, yeah. Is this so a I complete just... external system that's like an optional rule? Yep. Yes. Yeah, the this DMI. is a variant. Uh, this is a variant. Right. There's two it, ability scores that you can implement from here, Honor and Sanity. And we're using I think it might... Honor. I mean, it may have been interesting to start with this, but honor and throw it in at this point... Sounds kind of Cthulhu-ish. Yeah. They're two separate optional mm. rules, I think. I yeah. Think the same. I Why don't we just use the hero point system, Chucky? Oh gosh. What? I just want to. Uh, I just want to play some D and D. No. On me. No, that's. You sure you don't want to? Kind of, no, right. no, that's muted to masterminds. No, I don't want to go in that. Do I've you have one sideburn, mind. Chucky? No. This is. All right. This is a bit shaved off, more down. Okay. This one. Yeah. Yeah, with the head with the headphones on, it looks like you have a single sideburn. Single <laughs> sideburn, yeah. That's the new, that's the new fashion, guys. A single sideburn. That's the new fashion. <laughs> you know Where? what? I would believe it. Where is this rule in the DMG? Uh, page two hundred and sixty-four. Okay. Okay. Anyway, um, we are new using. I mean, so. Uh, anyway, yeah. so that's a new variant that's uh, <clears throat> new for the campaign. We haven't try, uh, tried it out yet. Um, just because we put it in the middle of the session, I will let you guys, spellcasters, especially because we have to change your spells tonight to a full range of spells. And we'll start with it basically the next morning, just so because we change it in the middle of a campaign. So tonight, as you rest, you'll be able to change uh, change around your spells, have a full spell sheet, and from now on, we're going to use the healing variant rule. So meaning a short rest is one full day, and a full rest is seven days. Oh, that reminds me. They said on Twitter that they did not intend for the variant, the resting variant rule to screw, screw over casters, so you're still supposed to get your spells back every 24 hours. Ooh, they, they did mention that on Twitter? Because yeah. that's a variant that I was going to use in systems when, yeah, when i would use that nice. ba basically what happened is they wanted to put the variant rule in there for people who want more hardcore adventures and they didn't realize that it boned casters so hard so they were like oh yeah we didn't intend for that to be the way it works um just do this instead <laughs> oh so basically it's not it's not short rest full spells it's like the, the yeah the, the, the short rest is full spells hours. just just only apply it to healing only apply it to healing was, was basically the <laughs> okay that makes a big difference because I was yeah. totally restrategizing, restrategizing my spell, my approach. Good. So, like, so it's good that don't... you don't need to do it. You okay. don't need to do it. It's okay. Yeah. Well, we will okay. get our yeah spells back at the end of the day. Okay. Yes, you will all be getting your spells back at the end of the day. Uh, and I think without further ado. So, what did we? What was the verdict on honor? 
Uh, I think I think I think I'm going to look more into it and see and see about it. Okay. I, I don't think it's a good. Uh, I mean, the only implement would be you just start giving us honor points to keep track of, right? Yes. Uh, well, the honor is an ability score, basically. So you need to roll, but I'm not really okay with that. I think. Oh, you. I think we're gonna basically extra ability score. You roll three d six for it or something, or four. Yeah, but I was thinking of just going going with the straight ten, and then your acts and your honorable acts or dishonorable acts. If you're gonna you call it an ability higher. score, I would argue against that more strongly. As I'm gonna say, I'm gonna look Strength, more into Strength, we'll cause, see. and twiz, charisma. Those are your six ability scores. <laughs> perception. And maybe if you're two point Neo, there's a perception house rolled in. And if you're super okay. awesome, maybe there's a grub skill that you roll for and you keep it. Keep, keep or the, possibly hotness. Corner yeah, out. but honor? What the fuck is with honor. that honor score, man? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay. So um, you guys are in the castle uh, and gold for it. You have made it here in the middle of a battle. Oh wait, I it's thought we were on battle. Griffins on yeah, our way out. That's where we are. Have you actually? Have you actually? Yeah. No, no, no. You haven't no, I think we're, we were discussing our plans in the map. Yeah. And Griffins yes. were offered. To oh, okay, okay. What the? Yes. Who? Why are there? Wait, the elves left their Griffins behind. Yeah. Yeah. A convenient <laughs> plot <laughs> device. That's like. That's a, oh, I, I left. I left my private jet. Behind and just sort of abandoned. It's, it's, uh, my my it's private jet that if it doesn't officer. eat, it dies. It's you know? very different. You have you have the Hammer Watch dwarves that have sent almost uh, three quarters of their forces to help the elves in their war. This was more as a tribute, as a gift, mm -hmm. or you know, to maintain lines of communication. Okay. Not to be and like so obvious. Our, our general plan was return to Valis and. I mean, we're trying to gather an army, right? To yeah, I, I, so Valis is Valis universe. Valis and all the city states adjacent to Valis have been taken over. You know, by let's the, jump into uh, the cult. Let's jump into character because you guys aren't map. This is character. Right we're now. sitting in the map room, right? I, yeah. Um, yes. But so I think is, that uh, the co-opting the power structure. Pause. Pause. Pause button. <laughs> Um, who is it? Can we set the scene a little bit more? Who else so is in the room? So, in the is, map room, is over here. The king, King Bearer, and Lady Shayla are there as well. And they're basically just listening to you right now and at certain points giving their opinions or advice. So, you're basically free to talk. If you want to talk in private, mention that. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was trying to establish. Okay. Continue, Justin. Oh, um,. So all the uh, all the city states that are in the south along the coast have now been united under the uh, the leadership of the cult that we fought earlier. Um, so I think that taking out the leader of the cult and then co-opting that power structure so that we now control all the southern cities would be really efficient, and then we can go help with the the war between the elves and the orcs. And then we can proceed north to the uh, the gap. And does that mean we just ignore Valis altogether? No, no, Valis is oh, Val Valis is okay. Sorry. I thought yeah. that was a so separate we go, section. So, so we go, we go south, east, north because we're already good on the west because of the mountain range, or good on the east because of the mountain range. So we go south, west, north. Right, right. I got you. And is time of the essence beyond the grand scale? Uh, uh, beyond um, the lady no. show up basically into into seats here and says, "It's going to be about two, maybe three weeks until the orcs have mustered a big enough force and enough ammunition to assault." Um, our forces in the Wandering Woods. To we assault or time. to overrun them? Reports have not been that detailed. Our lines of communications have been cut. We only have a couple of uh, birds that have made it over the mountains with parts okay. of messages. Okay. So we have we basically have roughly three weeks before we need to be uh, at the at the Wandering Woods. Preferably with an army at our back. Hmm. An army? No. If you can talk to the Bonjuratis and uh, raise that, can't. that would be. The who? The uh, Bonjurati, the organization, a uh, reminder for Bowen, the organization that sent the message of we have a, we have a safe way to get into Paris, and if you help us, we'll, we on, we have the same objective, take down this the script. This is the first time hearing of this. No, no, no it's, 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 it's the second time, but that's fine. Okay. I, I didn't remember that name either. And who's speaking? This is all Lady Shayla. Uh, this is Lady Shayla. Yeah. Um, 
in any case, there's no way to raise an army in two weeks. It is simply impractical. The we only, only have an army there. The elves well, I mean, them. I mean, technically, the technically the Valis already has the the what? We're, okay, we're, Valis is a city. We need to think of a name. I look at the map and I'm I start. I'm like, okay, look, this is clearly what is what is. We didn't think of a name for the southern region that is now no longer an army. Of, it's like one empire. There's no way we're reinforcing it. The Valesian Empire. Okay, they, we, we, we're we going to take over the Valesian Empire. The Valesian Empire already has a, a standing army that they that they use to unite it. We're just going to take it over. Did, aren't they a loose collection of city-states? With they they were until the cult structure. took them over. No, now they're all one thing. That was awfully quick. The cult took all like over all the southern city-states and united them into one empire under one guy who's le the head of the cult. Uh, Neil, can you wing me the mats? Go use the um, Age of Iron map. I was actually just looking at that, and then search for Valis. I changed everything around. Uh, yes. Or just click on or bound change nope. time period Age of Iron. Oh, will that work? Yeah. Although it's missing the the the, the, the desert, desert and stuff. Above yeah, it's it. it's the old version. Just go to role play oh, and no, search it Valis. It doesn't, it doesn't, okay. It doesn't miss. It doesn't miss. Go up. Go up. Go up. And Whatever. there's another version of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a second version above. Yeah. There, there's a lot of shit happening with the maps. Sorry, guys. No problem. Uh, so, how's my audio levels right now? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah, I think you're fine. The great my mods are okay. I, I'm. Po I point out that it's it's hundreds of miles from the from the battlefront with the wh whispering wood to Ballas. There is the Whispering Wood. It would take it would take months to march an army from Valis. Where the fuck elves. is the Whispering Wood? The elves are not getting wandering oh. woods of the Wandering Woods. Wandering yeah. Woods, not a Whispering wandering Woods. He said, <clears throat> "Oh, we, we already have a standing force, and the Wandering Woods with the elves." Um, I think uh, the elves just need our strategic help, and the Wandering Woods is to the east. This is, and they're around the like the um, horn of the mountains. Yeah. Yes. This is so, awkward. Can we? Can we fly Griffin over these over the mountains? Oh, over the, mm, the Griffins have made a journey over the mountains. And they could make it again. It would be much safer if you went south. If you went south and go around there, that is, if you have enough time. And let we will at least see what the situation is in Valis and begin sowing the seeds of insurrection. Yeah, I don't... How many weeks is it? Not... How long were we in the Jagged Tooth? Oh, we don't know, right? The Jagged Tooth? Do, I do turned to Lady he just said, like, he, and... he said several weeks, and you were gone for... Like three to days? One... Two days? Close to a month now. They built an empire in a month? Well, well I mean, they've been laying the groundwork they... for a considerable period of time. Yeah. <clears throat> so my question is this. If we actually go to the front to fight... How, what difference will three people make in an army? I think our forces, our purpose is better served, you know, doing something like going and trying to take out sections of, like, precision strikes rather than on the front lines. I think we should go to Valis. Yeah, uh, I think Valis I is our suggest, first. I suggest Valis would be your priority, but the elves, it's a slight chance they win. Okay. There's still a chance, but might I point out? Manage... Okay, perhaps huh? this is more impractical. I mean, more minute detail, but can we really fly into Valis looking like this? Also, I, I gesture to the gaudy dragon plate, no. dragon style plate mail that she I'm wearing. Lord Bayer nods his head and says, "Well, I've got quite a fix for you, son. It's it's been in the works since you left." Finished it uh, a couple of weeks ago, down in the vaults. Come, I'll show you. Um, you too, uh, Hammer Weirder. Says, sorry, little man. Now, we made one for the elf, but we don't have... What? We don't have one for you. What do you mean, you don't have one for me? I forgot that I was a halfling. And a female. And a female. <laughs> Well, uh, we could probably resize it in a couple of days. So don't know if we have that time. Anyway. But what are we I'll resizing? Show you after. Oh my god. Okay. He smiles. I, I'll show you I after. Shove the, oh, <laughs> the halfling out of the way and follow. Hey! Gesture Lord Baylor to show That wasn't very friendly. Come, let us, let's walk and talk. I, I tell Lady Shayla that I want to talk to her later about uh, magic and I'll follow. 
I want to come to too. I try and follow behind them. They don't stop you. Okay. It's yeah. I, I just come you. along for the ride. Right, so you, go the down, and... you go down. You go down in the vaults. Um, basically, in the map room, there is a uh, door in the back, the far back end of this uh, giant library. And down below, you walk about one hundred feet, two hundred feet, three hundred feet down the staircase. Then a massive door, a massive iron door. Guys, this is a really long way down. Where are we going? Well, we don't have we don't have our gold well, fort built in a mountain for nothing. You're not obligated to answer all of her questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think that Ryan and Justin are gonna kill me at some point. I think I'm going to be that annoying half. I think this is going to be that annoying halfling that you guys are not going to like. Or maybe that we just don't try very hard to save when it's the fail. Some, I think that's going to be my situation. You aren't allowed to fail saving throws, so you never actually die. <laughs> yeah. So you guys go down, and this giant, <clears throat> giant iron door is in front of you. The king goes through and moves several iron segments around. For this process takes a whole minute, and even if you try to remember all of this, it's extremely complicated. But Pine's using his both hands to do it. The door opens, and inside, a plethora of items. There are ancient items from swords half broken and armors almost destroyed to tapestries and pictures of old words and ancient heroes. People, some statues, even familiar to you, Martha. Right. And the king says, this is where the uh, Hellwiths have left their, mo their most important items after their passing. Ooh, Few ooh, have survived. Ooh, ooh, Are me, there, like, I have a there question, racks? I have a question. Are there racks to hang equipment? Is it? Yes, and several. some free? Some, uh, some uh, yes, there are free racks of equipment. Right, Mr. I King, guy, Mr. King, I have a question. I have a question. Here, removing armor. Okay, he can ask his question now. Yes, yes. Um, what'd you say your name is? Thimbleina. Okay, Thimbleina. No, Thimble. Name. Thimble. My name's Thimble. The fairy's name is Thimbleina. Oh, yes. Okay. What's your question? Why aren't your guards using these weapons? Most of the weapons here are dangerous. Some of them... Uh, well, aren't, aren't all weapons dangerous? Isn't that kind of the point? No, it's <laughs> dangerous for the user. Some of them are cursed, or some of them have uh, severe side effects upon using well, them. Well, why aren't you using the ones that aren't like that? I no, mean, wouldn't that, wouldn't that have helped you? So you didn't need us to save you? Are you I hope no, you're having no, fun, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a great time! Are you not? <laughs> anyway. Character is really here. annoying. <laughs> I think my character's gonna get killed. Bill Wynn, follow me. And he takes you far in the back. Uh, I'm currently, no, I mean, I'm currently, uh, clearly, I'm, I'm removing my plate mail. My no. half dragon plate mail. He waits. And getting it set up onto a, on a, some stand. sort of armor stand. Yeah. yeah. He and I lean waits, the red jump. skull great sword up against it. Or hang it from a, some, I don't know. Hang it from something nearby. He takes you in the back so after did. you finish all this. Yeah. And he shows you two, well, this is actually three suits of armor. Uh, one in each of your sizes, well, one of them in the later, the former Ferenc size. But the two of one, the two ones that are for you, in front of you. For you, Martha, there is a uh, half break. <clears throat> It's brilliant, done by a master craftsman indeed. On it shine blue lights of giant celestial creatures with their um, feet on the necks of shadow dragons, with their, uh, what do you call those, uh, hammers bashing demons. And then they just fade away, immediately, as if nothing was there, just to the ha half plate. And next to it, a full plate mail for Bowen, with a symbol of a stair on it, shining in a brilliant light. Then after a couple of seconds, it fades away. The old bearer 
King Bear seems very proud of this, smiling, and looks at you and says, Made with dwarven rooms. They can be uh, very visible and visible, or at your need. This one is for you, Martha, and this one for you, Bowen. They should um, I, help you in your travels. I take a step forward and inspect the suit of plate mail. You had a lot of faith that we would return to <laughs> collect these. And I started well, inspecting the... Hope is the only the thing I keep alive. <laughs> would you like a investigation check? Uh, feel free if you want to. Sure, let's get these dice warm. So, I just want to cast identify on like the whole room. It's not, pos <laughs> it's not possible, but that'd be a I very pretty light back. show. So he says, these are going to be helpful against the gray armies. So does it, does it look like it's made of ordinary steel? It does not look like it's made of ordinary steel. So it's. I mean, what 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 difference? You have no there? idea. They are. It's shiny, way more durable, and but it's. How do I know it's durable? I'm just steel. looking at a suit of armor on a stand. I mean, you you are look, you, you're investigating. You go touch it. Yeah. You go inspect it. Okay. Yeah. Definitely a lot lighter and looks looks amazingly well made. It's it's like you haven't seen lighter you haven't seen dwarves just lighter than steel. Hmm. Well, I start to try it on. You start putting it on. Yep. And it's very easy. It takes about just uh, five minutes and you put it on. That would be half the time. I'm going to write that down. Yes. <laughs> For the record. It takes I 10 minutes to put on plate mail. Uh, it takes 10 minutes to and put on heavy armor. Yeah, heavy armor. Is it... Yeah. Two minutes. Um, How long is it for medium is it, armor? Is it and it? So I get it all the way on. Yeah, uh, five minutes. Minutes. with no help. Five two minutes. minutes. Okay. No help. It is. It feels like it was sized for me. <laughs> it's pretty well. It's done exactly for. It seems like it's completely on your body. It's. How, how did you get my did. measurements? And I give the the king a wink. Um, Lady Shira smiles. If I had an honor skill, maybe ladies. I'd have to roll against it to make to. To step on social boundaries like that. <laughs> <laughs> nope, just a sixth level adventure. Lady Shira smiles. A lady has her ways. That's Goodness right. Me. Ladies have their ways. Um, do the runes pop out <laughs> conspicuously? No. While it's on me. No, they're um, it's just. So I think back to the whatever sort of feeling I use to activate the light on my flail, and I try and activate. No, the no. If I doesn't, can control the, the the visual display, my HUD. Doesn't work like that. <laughs> is it a no, full? It's got a, What is the helm fashioned like? I assume. I mean, a suit of plate mail has a full helm. Yes, the full helm <laughs> is fashioned like. Um, you know those like elven ones that are very smooth around the edges over no, here. No, I don't know what an elven full helm looks like. I've I've <laughs> never met an, I've never met an elf on, in plate mail before. So it's basically very smooth on the edges, with a sharp point over in front, um, opened like basically around like here, and the, uh, the these parts right here are kind of like, bent in front. Okay. Okay, and yeah. That Elven, Elven full helm did not, does not come. Yeah. <laughs> he says, does not. Think about, think about light. Think about a stare. Huh? I probably wasn't saying anything. I was just like. Yes, I know. Making funny faces. Okay. I'll start putting on. Sure, that. I, I humor him. Starts the putting his own. armor starts growing with the holy symbols of Mas or, uh, Aster quite brightly. Quite can I brightly. roll a religion check? You can. This is the same as my investigate check. Do I think this would suffice as a holy symbol? This? For the, for the casting of my spells? Mm, not yet. Maybe um, you need to attune to it. Attune? After that, yes. So I basically I need to sleep with it. 
And no, you just need to spend an hour with it. On yeah. You. Okay. Chucky, take a glance at Skype. Taking a glance at Skype. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. <clears throat> I try and turn it off. <laughs> Okay, you try and turn it off, and it just goes pops off. Okay. Against the armies of the shadows, it's gonna be useful. They um, destroy what is in the material plane. <clears throat> armies of the shadow. I was thinking a little more immediate future in the streets of Valus. Well, it will be useful in the street of Valus. Think about. Think about normal commoner crowds. Whoa, okay. Describe uh, Justin's suit, but I, I will follow up with that. Justin's suit is a half plate. It's, um, again, so they made it in the same material. Glowing with those eyes, he puts it on. They don't glow anymore. And then it fits him completely. Again, it takes only, actually, even less for him. It only takes like about two minutes, if I'm correct, to put it on. Are you tabbing the uh, equip time? Uh, yes, the equip time. If that comes into play, you will have a basically the light. So, it being a medium armor, it takes light uh, armor time to put this on. Okay. Same goes for heavy, goes medium. Okay. Um, there's, a, there's a chart for that. Yes, there's a chart. Uh, so donning and doffing armor is one minute. Uh, medium armor is five minutes. So yeah, that's a significant reduction. It takes me one minute to put it on. Or it would normally take five. So when I think of common clothes, does it just turn into like a burlap sack? Think about common clothes, and you are now dressed in common clothes. You look around, you feel the plate mail. You feel the cold, whatever material this is. But you how many see, pounds is it for the record? Um, half the weight of plate mail. What the fuck, <laughs> Chucky? You're making mistakes all over the place. No Shut up! Let him make the mistakes, Brian. <laughs> Let him make them. <laughs> okay. No all mistakes. right. There's no mistakes being made here. <laughs> how 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 wait how heavy is my my half plate? Uh, sorry? How heavy is my half plate then? You touch your hammer. Think about what you've done with it. Um, God, I hope he doesn't mean your penis. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm the hammer wielder, not Captain Hammer. There's uh, okay. Difference. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, well, mostly I've destroyed a lot of magical enchantment, so I think about that while I touch <laughs> touch my hammer. What happens? I hear a lot of typing, not a lot of talking. One second. <laughs> Neil's touch your hammer. Is uh, Neil feeding Chucky the script? Is what? No, I'm not helping him with anything. I promise, right? I'm not giving him clues as to what he's doing wrong. Yeah, Chucky. yeah. Sock puppet, Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Neil, you haven't typed? Neil, you haven't typed? I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So what happens when uh, Justin touches his hammer? Or thinks about touching his hammer? The light bursts out again. Oh, it, oh yeah, it bursts. And you can, see the, you can see the images. You can see the images of uh, the creatures. <clears throat> Um, you can see the images of the creatures, uh, these, whatever our light um, avatars on it are fighting, defeating them easily. And that's kind of about it. The, the image just seems to be shifting easily and easily as you look at it. It's like basically images of battle, of giant avatars of light fighting grayness and darkness. Interesting. This, do I... I mean, does anything happen to me? Do I feel anything different about the armor? Or is it just the way it looks changes? Um, you think about what? Sorry. Well, the runes on you, the runes on the armor are yeah. changing, right? 
Does yeah. anything happen, or does it? Do, do the runes just change? Do, like, do I feel any different? You don't feel any different, no. Okay. It's just the white. Weird, crazy runes. Got it. Okay. Does it do anything besides glow? I actually asked the king if this does do anything besides glow. The same. Think about whatever you want to be wearing right now. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, Martur is naked. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I could be thinking about that Amazon. I'd like to be wearing her, but no. <laughs> what, do you think, what do you think about? Yeah, what do you think about? That's the first thing that comes into my mind. Is an Amazon woman? <laughs> I, try and, I, try, I try and think about something else. <laughs> you think about an Amazon and suddenly... <laughs> Chucky, no, do we have confirmation? Does, did he wear a suit of human skin for a second there? Yes, just just for a second there. <laughs> should we do a double take? Do you like, uh, did, did I see what I, I thought I saw? And then I, 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 I immediately think about something else. Like I, I hearken back to my childhood and think about like a priest's robes. Like That's the very first thing I can think of. It's not the Amazon. <laughs> and it turns to that? I hope so. <laughs> it turns to that. This, is, this could be used for quite nefarious purposes and I turn mine back into an ordinary looking suit of plate mail or I visualize an ordinary looking suit of plate mail does it return to its original el creepy elven form I don't know creepy but like elven form with the or does it just it turns like out yeah no it turns it turns back to your to the normal one as you think about that like whatever Bowen was visualizing as a suit of plate mail yep so probably just a, yeah, new suit of steel plate with a simple helm and so not supernaturally shiny, but still a suit of plate now. Hmm. What does it actually look like? Uh, I told you before. <clears throat> not, I mean, I was asking, is it just us and King Baylor down here in the vaults? Oh, uh, anyway, Lady Shayra. Lady Shayla. I look, ask Lady Shayla what it looks like in reality. It's um, <clears throat> just a regular uh, plate mail and half plate. They're infused with the dwarven old magic. Hmm. It's uh, powerful. It makes you control the item. It's especially made for you. Almost nobody else could use it unless... Uh, they possess to the old blood, but few people are out there that do, and they're made to exact measurements. Uh, I will get you your spell list right now. Uh, Spells about what? Justin. Uh, not, not related to what's going on. Yeah, no. There you go. That's all the five E spells for you. Thank you. Not that there's an online copy somewhere. Wizards of the <laughs> Coast, if you're listening. That, it's, it's, nope. Nope. Just, you were just using just normal... Oh, this normal it's, a, it's a hand-typed list that I made. It's a file, but he has the player's handbook, so it's fine. Aaron read much? Okay. So, um... <laughs> Alright. So I look to the rest of the party and King Baylor and Lady Shayla say, well, shall we go? What else is in the, I don't ask, but I'm looking, what else is in the, in the vaults? Hmm. So, is it just well, like full, it's like an armory? It's basically an armory and it's, there's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things, as I said, broken off armor, broken off items, tapestries and uh, other items. You see like basically a, um, a figurine that seems like a dragon, uh, cut off in the middle, sitting yeah, in a I, uh, in a cupboard, and so on. Bowen's not really that greedy. He's not like looking for anything to. I don't know. That wouldn't catch his eye. But I will look to see if there are any religious texts, particularly magical scrolls. Um, no religious texts or. Uh, magical scrolls. It doesn't seem like. I don't uh, even need to roll a check for it. I just know it's divinely. You important. just no. I mean, you look around and there's no written material. Okay. If and I there's no a, book, there's a, 
If no. I sit, if I stand up against the wall and think about the color of the wall, do I blend into the wall? You think about the wall, and you are man now has the color of the wall. That's really useful. Sorry. <laughs> well, this guys, armor is, are we are we ready to go yet? This armor is ridiculous. Yeah, um, shall we mount up? It, it, uh, uh, Bowen, you want you want to cast detect magic, and then I can cast identify a bunch of times, and maybe there's something useful in here. <laughs> You know, We're not that make, would be a really pretty light show, but treasure. I think everything in here is magical. Like, everything. Yeah, but some of it's cursed and some of it's not, so identifying the not cursed items would be good. Well, I'm... Dwarf I King! Think... Hey, hey, Dwarf King! Didn't you already do all that shit? Don't you already know what's cursed and not cursed? That's the... Um, identifying is not how you identify a curse. Identify spell could uh, usually does not tell you if an item is cursed or not. Using mm. it will tell you. Items here are ages, ages old. Very dangerous to use one of them. We've tried once. Nan looks at Lady Shaga. Lady Shaga shakes her head. Many sisters lost their lives in, uh, in a couple of weeks. We barely identify a batch of them. Look, we can come back. For some more toys, Martyr. Oh, uh, we'll never be here again. Let's not, let's, let's, let's not pretend that we'll ever be back in Goldfort. Uh, I assure you, King, we will we will be back for your help. <laughs> once once the orcs are put down, we will we will be back through this way. And expecting an army of dwarves to be mustered and equipped for battle. Well, as I said, our main yeah. army is uh, with the uh, elves. Oh, but it is. We'll... Then the next time we see you, we may be leading your army home. Hmm. That would be a good sight, Bowen. That would be a good sight. So there's really no spell books anywhere in the room? Nope. No way to material whatsoever. <clears throat> Are there any blank books? Mm, nope. No, with, as I said, no book, no... Sp it's it's easy to look around because everything is kind of like piled in a specific place. So looking around... So you do not see any with the material. Would you like to meet a griffin? I suppose. I, like I, uh, I, uh, takes, I take the owl bear claws that I've been holding on to like, out of my pocket and uh, I put them down and I explain that they should not be touched by anyone but a hammer wielder. Very seriously. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the owl bear claws from the owl bear. Okay. That we killed in like week three. Okay. And I, I look at the king and I explain very seriously that no one but a hammer wielder should touch them. Well, he nods his head. It shall be done. I'll make a. Um, can they be moved? I can put them in a safer position than here. I'll, I'll, well, just show me, show me where you want me to put them, and I'll put them there. They really okay. shouldn't be touched by anyone, but why? <laughs> she shows you an empty ball. You can put it in here. Okay. I hang <laughs> up my winter wolf cloak on, cloak on the way out, and it, Neil didn't seem to bite, but I was suggesting that we go scope out the griffins. Oh, sorry. Um, I was yelling at my chat. We're probably not going to need that. Yeah, I I'll, I'll hang up my cloak. Thimbalina. What? What? Wanted... Griffins? Where? 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 Oh! Uh, moves out of the like moves out of uh, Fimble's chest and walks around quite. No, uh, no, don't worry about them. They're just being stupid. Uh, Go back to sleep. Your uh, Majesty, okay. would you care to direct me to to your stables? That was yeah, let's go, Thimble. We can fly. Oh wait, you you already fly. That's well, not going to be exciting for you, but it's going to be exciting for me. Let's go, let's go. And Thimble starts like bouncing up the staircase well ahead of everyone else. It, I mean, it would be an eerie if they actually have like a specifically a, a stable essentially for no an no. aviary. Uh, they told you before aviary. they are. They yeah. told you before they are uh, in the basically in the courtyard behind. Okay. All right. Uh, I yeah. I go to the courtyard. Marcher can stay and play in the treasure vault if he'd like. Wait. But I don't think Bowen would Audio have cut out for a second. patience for it. He would feel kind of awkward. Looting the king's <laughs> in front of him. 
technically it's mine, right? Because it belongs to the hammer wielders. But I'll I'll hey, go. If you I'll can go justify along. it. You can take what you can carry. No, I'm actually leaving stuff behind. Um, actually, I'll leave the multiple deeds of property I have from Ballas, which no, actually those might what? be useful. Actually, out of character, bring that with you. <laughs> you have deeds to property. That's worth a yeah. fortune, especially if you run the city. My God, you can make a killing. And they're only, they're so light. Look, they're just paper. Why would you ever Come leave these behind? Them. Here, okay. I'll hold on to them for you. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you sure? That way it's always with you and you don't have to leave it behind. Yeah, now I make sure Thimble precedes me out of the room. She's not the last <laughs> person to leave the room. <laughs> like, after you, Thimble. Oh, you're such a gentleman. It's rare to find gentlemen these days. Bowen's never nice to me like that. Well, he doesn't know what he's missing out on. That's what I say. Wow, you are so courteous. When she yeah. flounces ahead. Yeah, I leave behind uh, all of the jeweled cups, the emerald necklace, the garnets, uh, and all that stuff that I've been carrying around this whole time. And I'll leave behind most of all of my silver and all of my copper and some of my gold. See, shit gets heavy. It does, and now it's not. She converted all the platinum, the holiest of metals. Is there platinum in here? Can I just like pick up some platinum and like exchange? <laughs> <laughs> there is no platinum, but dude. Okay. Do you do you actually see that other one? Uh, I'll talk to the king about it later. I'm not gonna bring up money in front of a uh, thimble. <laughs> in front of the help. Yeah. Basically, I basically I deposited like 1,200 G and gems and random uh, items in in the uh, the vault though. I'm going to keep a bank tab, actually. Wait, you act, you literally deposited money in their vault? It's my <laughs> vault. They said it was mine. I deposited oh. trinkets. That's true. They did say it was yours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now Thimble was off. Just, I don't know. Yeah. So griffins, huh? Talk to me about some about some griffins. Well, uh, the elves who have them with us, they're the uh, one of so the I don't want griffins. your NPCs to describe them. I want to look at them. Oh. So you move out of the, uh, yeah, he closes the door quite intricately again. He, I, was Mar Marcher, were you done? In yeah, I'm done. That's fine. Okay. You guys go up and he takes you to a courtyard behind. Fighting has not gotten me here. It's, um, it's still, well, very much, uh, green and the uh, trees are still standing. There's no, uh, burn marks or any rotting bodies around but you can see two majestic griffins in the back uh just howling at the sun and flying about ways so what do they sound they like are... when they howl at the sun um... <laughs> that's exactly how they sound that's exactly how they sound good job Good job. Perfect. You said there were three of them? Uh, two of them. Two of them. Yes. Symbol uh, backs up towards the wall and kind of pushes herself against it, staring up at these griffins. All right. I pick the biggest <laughs> looking... Griffins! Griffins! And... And Thimbolina starts, like, flying towards them. No, Thimbolina, they're going to eat you! All right. Can I roll and... a perception check to figure out which griffin is bigger? Yes. 16... The one on the one on the left is definitely bigger. All right, I immediately approach the bigger griffin. Fimbolina okay. seems to and attract their attention, and no! they start like, moving easily towards her, and then stop and stare at her. And Fimbolina is speaking in some tongues. You don't really understand what she's saying. Oh, motherfuckers! Yes, I do. I start chanting divine words, and I look up <laughs> my spell list. Don't you? Don't you tempt me, Chucky? <laughs> 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 I'm glad that I haven't had a chance to change my spells from from tongues to something more useful. But okay, Sorry, so what, what's do we spell? have an explicit language tab on this on this channel, Neil? No, you can say whatever you want as long as we're not okay. on the front page. And then you're the only thing you're not allowed to say is cunt waffles. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my. We specifically kind of were told by Twitch that was not allowed to be said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. How After even, I don't want to know. Yeah, someone okay. was cursing and it came up, and then I got a PM like 
this five seconds later being like, dude, don't do that again. All right. This spell <laughs> grants the creature you touch the ability to understand any spoken language it hears. Moreover, when the target speaks, any creature that knows at least one language can hear the target understands and can hear the target and understand what it says. Okay. Anyone who's understand. Okay. It's, so it's, I touch a, it's a battle fish. First of all, I touch myself and I think about a stare. So maybe my armor glows with those rings again on accident. Yeah. Because wow. I need a holy symbol. Actually, I, I, I need a holy symbol for my shield. I haven't seen other creatures in a very long time. What is your name? So I'm touching. So I've got to touch either the griffin or the fairy. So hopefully yeah. the griffin knows enough language skills for me to for me to get my tongues on. Well, they seem to be. <laughs> they seem to be speaking the same language. <laughs> Can I get the, a uh, <laughs> griffins? The griffins respond in their own language. Um. My name is Jotox, and his is a whale. Jotox and a whale. It is a pleasure to meet you. My name is Bowen. These are my. This is Thimble and Thimbleina, and I. That's, We're that's his that's friends. He's trying to say. You don't. You don't. Oh understand. wait, nope. Uh, this isn't Griffin. This yeah. Is like. <laughs> yeah, basically, Thimbleina looks at you, Ryan, and says, Bowen speaking. I speak Griffin. Um, I can. I can speak anyone. Yeah, I don't understand what you're saying. I can speak anyone that will let me touch them, but your your high pitched gibberish doesn't make sense to me, little fairy. And I continue uh, getting to know the Griffins. Uh, for the next um, hour, I can talk to anything that I can touch that's smart enough to. So have basically, thoughts, the basically. two Griffins, they kind of <laughs> tell you their story. Um, they seem to be all Griffins, very uh, experienced Griffins. Um, so these are like, uh, these are bred as riding Griffins by the elves? That's, that's yes. their deal. Did yes. they have saddles already on them, or saddles nearby? Not on them, but saddles you can see saddling equipment that you got. Alright, I let them know that we are going to eventually, we're going to return them to their home eventually, but we're going to have to take the long route and, you know, build up. I got an hour to chat with these guys, so I'm just, I'll ease into the fact that we're going to, we're going to be borrowing them for a little while. They seem to ask a lot of who you are, who do you serve, they recognize the symbol of a stare, they ask what your mission is, and so on. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they're griffins. They're I mean, I'm probably getting the impression they're not much smarter than animals, right? Do not griffins really have, like, human intelligence? Really? No, it seems okay, like... So then, I mean, I answer all their questions. I don't hide yeah. anything. I pr the Bowen probably doesn't are... have a very... To be honest, they might be smarter than me. They're a proud so. and noble, intelligent race, dude. Yes. Yeah. yes, they're yeah. not just like some mounts that you. Yeah, own. Bowen, Bowen has nine intelligence. That's minus one. So he's pr so, he answers the questions to the best of his ability. But to be honest, they probably understand more about the situation and the world that we live in than he does. Eventually, my ears so like start to hurt from listening to this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I go find Lady Shayla. So basically, the uh, eagles seem to be quite impressed with you. Griffins, and they are they are lion eagles, right? Or wait, and they, they tell you, yes, yeah, quadrupedal qu flying quadru eagles. Yeah, they tell you, we shall serve you, and the ring. Until your quest is finished, we are uh, impressed of your well crusade, and we have helped Hamwiris before. How old are they? Aren't griffins like animals? Don't they only live like a couple decades? Um, usually, yeah, that's what you know about griffins. Had, or that I had, maybe. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. I mean, you don't know, really. You're not sure. I maybe. ask them how old they are. I don't go into the my what I expect them to say. I am about close to 150 years old, and my friend here is about 200 years old. Wow. Okay. We anyway. are the first born, yeah. and we live much okay, we, far. Yeah, we don't need to roll. I don't actually want to role play an encounter with Griffins. Um, okay. I just wanted. To, I just wanted to call you on your shit and let you know that <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a sixth. I'm a sixth level adventurer, and I got I got tricks up my sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Got it. good. So let's see what happens with. My third. I'm so My glad third. I haven't swapped that out for more healing spells, by the way. 
because that's like from, <laughs> that's like the first thing I'm gonna do is swap out those utilities for more healing. Now that we're doing slow healing rules. <laughs> yes, Martha. Get Martha some Martha. spells. What is it? Um. Well, a, I wanted to talk to you about um, perhaps sharing some of our our spells. It seems like there's. I keep running into situations where um, the spell I don't have the exact spell I need. And um, like out of character martyr is always very focused on the idea that magic can solve things if you just have the right magic. Um, and this is the first time he's ever really gotten to talk to a, a magic user that wasn't, you know, his evil, evil uh, master. And the second thing is uh, I keep ending up fighting other casters in this war and i feel like that's a continually going to happen so are there any is there any special way to be better at fighting casters that's uh, what mm. i want to talk to her about she shakes her head i have heard tell of a feat called mage slayer <laughs> it's in the player's hand <laughs> <laughs> i have um i do not know much about this Marfu. um but i can help you in some ways. I have a couple of spells uh, that I could lend you, or you could write in your spellbook if you so wish. Not a many though, most of my spellbooks and other magic equipment was destroyed in the fall of the uh, arcane prison. And everything else was stolen by my former sisters and brothers. Anything that would interest you. Especially. Any um, um, spell that you are after. I mean, would I even know the names of spells? I actually don't know the answer to this question. But I know, but I know yeah, you were, you're um, a trained yeah. wizard, right? You were an apprentice yeah. for... You know, you know the spells. Yes, you know the, you know the name of the spells. Okay. And, um, presumably well, your character knows well, everything that's in the player's handbook. Not really, no. Yeah. It's not. It's not. You don't know all the details of the spell. You basically know the like the general feel of it. It's like water breathing. You don't know exactly how long it lasts. You don't know exactly what it takes to make it, but you know you can water breathe. Okay, that's, that's kind of the idea of it. Um. And but be, before we continue on. Uh, I think it's almost time always. for our break. So it's like it's actually ten ten minutes past. So let's let's jump well, into a break. Started late. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. We're good. And, wrap, get it to a yeah. nice wrap up. Why don't right. we let's let's come back on the other side and see what happens with uh, the spells and the griffins. Bam. See you guys on Lightning. the other side. It's Lightning. my line. You're stealing my line, Chucky. That's mine.